I bought a cheap hand warming device from an Aliexpress to check if I can find something interesting inside to show you and hopefully learn something and maybe steal some technology. So without a second thought, let's look at what is inside. Of course, there is a lithium battery inside and some printed circuit board with a bunch of components on it. And also one of the most important parts is a hidden element, at which we will look a little bit later. From an engineering point of view, overall everything is constructed and assembled not badly. The case is designed with latches, so it can be disassembled and assembled again. Also, it is made from aluminum, so the heating element can easier transfer heat into your hands due to a high aluminum temperature conductivity. Wires that connect the battery to the circuit are soldered to special steel plates, which are welded to the battery's positive and negative terminals. And the question is, why didn't they solder wires directly to the battery with the same result? There is one important reason for that. During soldering, the battery is heating up, which is undesirable and harmful to it. But during welding, metal melts very locally without heating the whole battery. That is the safe way of connecting wires to the battery, which everybody uses. And if you ever create a device with a battery, and you have to attach wires to it, use such a method. Let's now have a closer look at the heating element, one of the most important parts of the device. Basically, it is a printed circuit board, but a flexible one. And these rows you can see are the copper traces that fill all PCB area. You can order such a PCB easily from PCB manufacturers. Resistance of one such patch is around 3 ohms, and voltage across it when the heater is turned on is 3.65 volts. Basically, it is just a resistor through which current flows and it dissipates the power of around 4.5 watts per PCB, or 9 watts in total for two of them, because they are connected in parallel. And that is a lot. I tried touching them and they are really hot, it is impossible to hold them for even part of a second. However, through the case it feels a little bit different and the temperature is comfortable for the hands. In addition, the crazy stuff is that I don't see any temperature sensor in here. There is a place for one on the PCB, but it is not soldered. So basically there is no temperature feedback, which is a little bit strange. If I was making this device, I would definitely put one, just to be safe. So, as I said, the overall quality of the whole device isn't bad. Main PCB is assembled and soldered by a machine and also looks pretty good. So now let's see how it works. To control all this mess there are two integrated circuits. One is a battery charging controller, another one is probably some cheap and simple microcontroller that tracks button presses and turns heating on and off. I am not sure which controller is that, because there is no marking on it. But its job is really simple, it just checks when the button is pressed, flips this transistor on and off, which connects and disconnects heating elements to the battery, and it should check the heating elements temperature, ideally. But as we saw, the temperature sensor isn't there. So, according to my experience, microcontrollers are used nowadays everywhere, due to their low price and high functionality for its price. Another integrated circuit is managing battery, controlling its voltage, charging current and also provide 5 volts output, when this device works as a power bank. Oh yeah, by the way, this mini hand warmer also can work as a power bank, providing 5 volts and 1 amp through USB output. The IC that is responsible for that is TP4333, and the datasheet is in Chinese of course. But it has a very basic simplified schematic, using which I can explain how it works. So here is a micro USB input for charging. Here is 5 volts USB output, and probably the most important one, the battery connection point. This IC input tracks battery voltage, and this one is the input and the output of the DC-DC converter. And exactly this input is the most important one. It can work in two modes. The first one is charging mode, when the power goes through micro USB which is 5 volts and charges battery, max voltage of which is 4.2 volts. So to lower the voltage, buck converter is required. Therefore, inside of this microchip there should be a circuit like Z, which can lower the input 5V to battery voltage. At another mode, when the circuit works as a power bank, the situation is opposite and battery lower voltage must be converted to a higher one, to 5V to power USB port. Now it requires boost converter, which can boost lower battery voltage to a 5V. Simplest boost circuit that can be used looks like this. However, these two circuits can be combined together, creating a bidirectional buck boost converter, which fully satisfies functionality needs. It can work in both directions, charging and discharging the battery, providing the required voltage levels. And I believe such circuit is used in this IC, even if they don't show it. So one more time, how this buck boost works. 
when operating in battery charging mode or bug mode, transistors are switching alternately. Alternately. And to be more specific, this one works as a diode if we compare it to classical bug converter scheme, and this one is turned on and off, and the difference between on and off state regulates voltage. In the second mode, power bank mode or boost mode, situation is opposite and now this switch works as a diode and this one is switched on and off to control output voltage. Like in previous modes, they are also switching alternatively. Alternately. So that is how they managed to implement two functions using one integrated circuit and one DC-DC converter. Overall, I like how this mini hand heater is built. The quality is ok, electronics looks good and the most important thing, it does its job. It makes your hands warm. However, there is several things I would change. With one lithium battery and 9 volts heating element, battery gonna last for around 1 hour. Assuming that blue battery without any marking is a default one, with a capacity of 2.7 amp hours. And in my opinion, 1 hour of working is kinda not enough. They could have put a 2 batteries there to increase working time to 2 hours. There is enough place inside the case for the second battery for sure. But I understand that manufacturers try to do it as cheap as possible, and batteries are kinda expensive. Also, they could have put a temperature sensor, and with only one button and the microcontroller that the device already has, it would be possible to regulate temperature simply by using PWM, connecting and disconnecting the heating element from a battery. Another concern that it is very light, and if you watched the previous video, you know that weight is the main reliability parameter. But the device costs less than 10 bucks, so for such price I think it's kinda fine. Also, I wanted to speak a little bit about the purpose of videos like that. The main idea is to use other people's knowledge to learn engineering and electronic skills. What I'm trying to say. Probably it took several days for a group of engineers to design this mini hand heater. For me it took 2 days to disassemble it and create a video about it. And for you it's just 10 minutes to watch this video, and you can easily absorb ideas and solutions of the whole engineering group. So look other videos on the channel, like this one and subscribe to see new ones. It will be very helpful for me.